This video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. Alan. Welcome to Jurassic World. Jurassic Park is an undeniable classic made by an iconic filmmaker at the peak of his career. It won three Academy Awards, revolutionized the capability of visual effects and film, and after 25 years, Jurassic Park is still just as thrilling and entertaining as it was when it was first released. The commercial and critical success of Jurassic Park spawned an entire franchise of games, toys, and four subsequent films, but none of those sequels have been able to recapture the magic of the first film. But why is that? Where did this franchise go wrong? In this essay, I'm going to dive into the Jurassic Park series, comparing the original masterpiece to its mediocre sequels, until finally pinpointing the moment I believe Jurassic Park died. Hold on to your butts. When discussing the sequels, there's a handful of common complaints. None of the characters appear to have any logic. After all, they keep choosing to go back time and time again to Death Island, full of carnivorous dinosaurs running amok. Any engaging moral debate surrounding science and ethics is gone. And let's not forget about random characters suffering cruel and brutal deaths, usually reserved for the main villain. I mean, I get that she was a mediocre babysitter, but damn. Those are all justifiable complaints, but I want to focus on two main elements which were present in the original film, but severely lacking in the sequels. Spectacle and Suspense. First, Spectacle. It's impossible to sustain the same sense of awe and wonder across multiple installments. Whether it's Middle Earth, Hogwarts, or a galaxy far, far away, the excitement of entering a new world for the first time can never be replicated. That initial feeling of arriving on Isla Nublar, entering the gates of Jurassic Park, and seeing full-size dinosaurs is incredible. But the Jurassic Park sequels have never been close to recreating that same sense of awe. The premise of humans surviving on a dinosaur-infested island is difficult to build on, which is why every sequel feels like it's retreading on tired ground. Ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and, and screaming. That single sentence perfectly encapsulates the structure of every single Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> Apparently Michael Crichton, writer of the Jurassic Park novels, tried working with the screenwriters on Jurassic Park 3, but left after only a few days when he couldn't come up with a satisfactory idea. Without any real interesting direction to take the series, the creators have relied heavily on nostalgia. By connecting these inferior sequels to the original classic, the creators are hoping to direct their audience away from the larger story issues towards shiny distractions in the form of mementos. Mementos that are tied to emotional memories in the audience from their experience of watching the original film. But the problem is, these sequels have done nothing to earn these emotional responses on their own. They've merely taken the original film and squeezed every drop of nostalgia from it like blood from a stone. It's lazy, undisciplined writing. Ian Malcolm puts it this way in the original Jurassic Park. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox, and now <laughs> you're selling it. Whereas the original stood as an expertly crafted film in its own right, the sequels merely stand on the shoulders of the original. Remember Sam Neill and Laura Dern? Remember the T-Rex? Remember the raptors? Remember that one scientist? Remember the park? They're all just the same tired details played out over and over and over again. Which leads me to the next element lacking in the sequels. Second, suspense. In a sense, Jurassic World serves as a thinly veiled metaphor for the relationship between the Jurassic Park series and its audience. No one's impressed by a dinosaur anymore. After 25 years, dinosaurs just aren't as exciting as they once were. And as the creators desperately seek for a way to extend this profitable series, they believe that they can fix the problem by throwing more and more dinosaurs on the screen. And not just more dinosaurs, but bigger and scarier dinosaurs. Jurassic Park 3 introduced the Spinosaurus, which killed the once dominant T-Rex handedly. And then both Jurassic World films introduced a new dinosaur hybrid in hopes of ratcheting up the action. It's the often misguided philosophy that more is better, but I'd argue the opposite. Some of the greatest villains in film history are barely present on the screen. Darth Vader is on screen for 10 minutes in A New Hope. The Wicked Witch, 12 minutes in The Wizard of Oz. Hannibal Lecter, 16 minutes in The Silence of the Lambs. 
the Xenomorph, five minutes in Alien, and the shark is only visible on screen for four minutes in Jaws. What makes a monster terrifying isn't necessarily their presence, but the anticipation of their presence. Out of Jurassic Park's 127 minute runtime, dinosaurs are only present on screen for 15 minutes, by far the lowest amount out of the entire Jurassic Park series. And this is crucial because the other time should be dedicated to the main characters, their relationships, drama, themes, motivations, stakes, and arcs. These are the aspects that coalesce to make engaging stories, not bigger, scarier dinosaurs. Think about the first time we see a full-size dinosaur in Jurassic Park. Spielberg doesn't immediately focus on the dinosaur, he focuses instead on the characters, their emotional reactions, the look of awe on their faces. Because Jurassic Park isn't a film about dinosaurs, it's a film about characters struggling for survival from dinosaurs. A villain is only as good as the characters engaging with it. And in Jaws and later Jurassic Park, Spielberg understood this delicate balance. But unfortunately, Spielberg forgot all about this in his sequel, The Lost World. And I believe the third act of The Lost World is the moment Jurassic Park died. From the very beginning of the Jurassic Park series, Spielberg stated how he never wanted to make a monster movie. Jurassic Park wasn't a monster movie. It was a movie about animals long ago gone extinct that through the miracle of science and technology are brought into the 20th century. And that really fascinated me and that immediately set my own template for not making this a monster movie. Monster movies are generally disregarded as a genre because they most commonly consist of monsters attacking flat, boring characters. And while the original Jurassic Park successfully avoided this comparison, the sequels have lost track of what made the first film so dynamic. Now, instead of interesting characters wrestling with moral, ethical arguments about the repercussions of playing with science, the series has turned into simple stories of dinosaurs killing uninteresting characters. While rewatching The Lost World, I was surprised to find that it's not as terrible as I once remembered. The scene with the two T-Rexes and the camper is as terrifying and expertly crafted as anything in the original film. But I'd have to say that the turning point in the entire series happens in the third act, when the T-Rex terrorizes San Diego. The original ending for The Lost World consisted of the main characters fleeing the island in the helicopter and then battling pterodactyls in a climactic action sequence. But then, Spielberg decided to change the ending. I called Dave and I said, hey, let's throw out the whole last act and let's just somehow find a way to bring the T-Rex back to America. So kind of on a whim, we worked that into the story and ended the picture uh, you know, in the US. Changing the ending on a whim not only resulted in a mediocre, disconnected product, for instance, there was a whole scripted section about raptors killing the entire crew of the ship transporting the T-Rex, which was never filmed. But yet, we still saw the pieces of their dismembered bodies, which never made sense. And Nick, played by Vince Vaughn, the game hunter, and Malcolm's daughter are completely absent from the third act, without any character arc or meaningful resolution. But larger than those issues, Spielberg lost sight of his entire mission behind the Jurassic Park series. It was no longer about the characters and science, it had devolved into a monster movie. And it sounds like Spielberg slowly realized this during production of The Lost World. I beat myself up, growing more and more impatient with myself. It made me wistful about doing a talking picture, because sometimes I got the feeling I was just making this big, silent roar movie. I found myself saying, is that all there is? It's not enough for me. And that's exactly how I feel when I watch every Jurassic Park sequel. Is that all there is? It's not enough for me. It's disappointing because every subsequent film feels like a wasted opportunity for something truly unique and special. But until the creators realize how to effectively interject spectacle and suspense into the Jurassic Park films once again, I'm afraid that this endangered franchise will eventually become extinct. This video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription-based service containing over 10,000 video lectures across a wide array of topics including writing, literature, science, history, or even how to cook, learn a new language, or become a better photographer. These in-depth lectures are taught by professors from Ivy League and other renowned universities, and are experts in their specific field from places like National Geographic, the Smithsonian, and the Culinary Institute of America. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is giving my viewers a fantastic offer of a free trial. Just visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash theelk to start your free trial today and start taking classes immediately. There's also a link in the description below that will take you to their site. 
I just took the course Screenwriting 101, Mastering the Art of Story. Specifically, his lecture on reverse engineering successful scripts helped reinforce my essay on the Jurassic Park series because he shows how dissecting successful screenplays and figuring out how and why they work so effectively can help pinpoint and improve the structural and character issues apparent in other screenplays. I can't recommend his lectures enough if you're looking to improve your screenwriting. Again, go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash the elk right now to start your free trial today. It's not only a great way to help improve the skills of your specific trade, but it's a great way to help entertain the elk and to help me make more content for you. So thank you to them and thank you to you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. A lot of people in the comments were asking for this video specifically, so hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a message in the comments below. Tell me if you liked it or if you disagree with this essay or when you think the moment Jurassic Park died. Also reach out and give me some suggestions for topics you'd like to see me explore in this The Day Something Died series. If you'd like to help support Entertain the Elk, please consider becoming a patron. Patrons get exclusive content like exclusive commentaries, get the videos released early to them. Go to the website below. I'll have the link in the description below. That's the best way to help this channel and to help me make more videos. So I would really, really appreciate it. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.